Good evening, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session, Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining as we are about to discuss a very important topical matter. And this morning, or this evening rather, <laughs> let me begin by um, saying to you that it is a privilege to be with you one more time. And I'd like to share some thoughts about a recent video that I saw on TikTok that I'd like to share with you. So let me begin by showing you that video and then you comment on it, make a few comments, and then we shall end the video, right? So this video is gonna be quite brief, which sometimes it's good to have just a brief video, isn't it? So let me share my screen with you and begin the video um, right now, as it were. This is our prime minister speaking and he's speaking about misinformation, one of the favorite topics, I must say, of a lot of Jamaicans at this point. So please listen. I have noticed a lot of misinformation. Uh, people getting information from other sources which are not accurate, which are not true, and which lead to misunderstanding and over expectation. I urge you, don't listen to anybody who comes to you and say, you know, we're going to send something for you tomorrow or something is going to come unless it comes from an official source. That is, you hear the news on our traditional media, on the GIS, on our pages, or from the official authority. Please rely on official information. Very good. So you've heard of the Prime Minister of Jamaica, the most honorable um, Andrew Holdes. Now, Let's begin by saying that the Prime Minister's responsibility is to protect the people of Jamaica, and we applaud him for trying to do so, right? Because that is his one of his primary responsibilities. Now, having said that, I understand that given the state of the devastation that the hurricane that Hurricane Beryl has reached upon the island, particularly in the southern coast of Jamaica, we understand that there might be a lot of misinformation online. And I applaud his efforts for averting and also preventing Jamaicans from being targets and being victims of such acts of misinformation, you know, uh, because we understand that people might be awaiting things um, that they think that is coming from, you know, what should I say, credible sources of information when they might be just telling mere lies. So the prime minister has to ensure that the citizens are taken care of. The problem is that Jamaicans do no longer trust the government. The government has lost trust and they have lost trust for many years and rightly so. It is not because the people wanted to distrust the government, it was because the governments have not been acting in a trustworthy manner. Many of the things that our governments tell us are lies and they are propaganda and they are also have truths. As a result of that, our citizens have not placed their trust and confidence in governments. And that has been happening for a long time, not only in the GLP administration, but also in the PNP administration. And Mr. Golding, not Mr. Golding, Mr. Holness, your government, under your government, there have been lots of allegations of corruption and you know, in which people have lied and you have even lied. We have not even heard from your statutory deductions and what has taken place with that um, information. So people are no longer trusting government officials or media houses, including the GIS, are just mouthpieces of the government. So people understand that they do also promulgate and they diffuse um, and transmit misinformation, disinformation. So Jamaicans are not going to buy that from you, even though what you're seeing, I agree with it. And what you're seeing is valid and that Jamaicans should be wary of people who are disseminating misinformation, particularly as regards, you know, assistance coming from the government and from other sources, because sometimes given the level of violence that we have in Jamaica, it could be criminals showing up, up, up at your home to kill you. So you've got to be careful, Jamaicans, about where you get your information from, because let us say that somebody says that they're going to be delivering 
um, you know, sheets of zinc or whatever assistance that you might need. And then you have criminals who show up at your door and snuff out your life, right, unexpectedly. So you've got to be definitely uh, be careful of what you're seeing. But is the government also exaggerating this claim of misinformation? And if you have one or two victims of it, you cannot just pull everything into one box and say that, you know, these two victims or three victims, um, you have to now implement laws that will go against people divulging information. Or Because one of the things that I'm seeing happening in our societies, not only Jamaica, in the Western world and the entire world at large, is the fact that governments are trying now to suppress information, including on this platform that I'm speaking on. Right, information is being suppressed, is being censored. So the government will use any sort of example uh, to suggest that they will have to implement stringent laws so that Jamaicans um, who are desirous of expressing themselves according to the dictates of their conscience can no longer do so. Right, so it's very important that our citizens understand that we cannot afford to just lay at the altar of sacrifice our freedom. Uh, we can't do that and surrender our freedoms to the government because once we have lost our freedom of expression, uh, we have lost everything. Because with freedom of expression goes everything, freedom of conscience, freedom of the ability to be mobile, everything is going to be lost. Freedom of religion, right? All of these are going to be lost because that is what gives us the ability. We take these freedoms for granted, the freedom even now that I'm expressing myself, even though with some level of restriction, but it's still some amount of freedom. And when everything goes, then we are going to be in trouble, right? And freedom of expression is something that is fundamental, the freedom that's fundamental in every democratic society. So it's very important that Mr. Mr. Holness understand that the Jamaican people understand that the government needs to show us the example. They need to lead by example, by principle. And if they do so, then Jamaicans will be compelled to listen to them and to trust the sources of information with which they are affiliated, right? So that's what he needs to understand. But Mr. Holness, you were on record recently also talking about tracking people, um, about what they say on social media. This is not something that should be happening in a democratic society. There are lots of things that will be said that will not be pleasing. And some of which also might not really sound, it's not amenable um, to the human air, right? No, nobody wants to hear people talking bad things about them and also diffusing false information um, about them, libelous information about you know, anyone particularly yourself, people don't like that, right? And we should strive not to do so. But within a democratic society, that is that is one of the aspects of freedom, freedom of expression. And if you think the person has spread any lies or rumors on you, you also have the freedom to sue that person if you need so, if you need to do so. But I don't think we need to have our governments control the information that we access because we're not children. We're not children. While the government is there to protect us, we have to understand that the government needs to understand that we are not children. We are actually adults in the room and that we are have to be held responsible for the information that we refuse and the information that we receive. Now, with freedoms come responsibilities. And with responsibilities come mistakes. So while we live in a free society and we are free to make decisions and we are free to diffuse information and to receive information, we must accept that we have a responsibility to diffuse correct information. If we diffuse false information, then for we have to stand up to the uh, consequences that follow. Right? That is what we need to say to our people that you, when you make decisions to diffuse information, to transmit information, to convey information, if the information is false and or information is libelous, you must be held responsible um, for the consequences that follow. But not to suggest that you whatever information you, you are going to 
diffuse, you have to always be truthful because you know we understand that not everything we say can always be verified at the time, right? And there are all a lot, lot of other things that impinge on the information that we transmit. And sometimes we make mistakes, right? Sometimes individuals, when they're transmitting information, they make mistakes. But for the malicious people out there, the criminals who are seeking to destroy people's lives and to create mayhem in people's lives, definitely the prime minister should be going after those persons and to ensure that people are protected Right? We have just too much crime and violence. But I would want the Prime Minister, Prime Minister Andrew Holness, to deal with information on education. I want you, Mr. Prime Minister, to get accurate information, accurate data in terms of how we can improve the educational system in Jamaica. Another thing I would like to see you divulge is information, accurate information with regard to the economy and or growth or lack thereof. I think I would like to hear from you credible information and not the propaganda that you're always spreading. Not only you, but the politicians, whether they're on the PNP uh, political aisle or on the GLP side of the political spectrum. You politicians have often diffused, right, and transmitted false information as regards the performance of the economy. And people have been calling you out and saying that we cannot just sit and listen to new liberal institutions like the IMF and the World Bank for them to give us the performance of an actual performance of our economy. Because what we see when you go to Jamaica, you see wide scale ubiquitous poverty. And we're not seeing that healthy economy of which you are talking right or about which you are speaking. So please, we want accurate information with us that's concerned. We also want accurate information, Mr. Prime Minister, about your business enterprises, your private business enterprises, right? Your taxes and all of these things, not only about you, but from your government ministers. We'd like to hear accurate information as opposed to a lot of the obfuscations and the, the lies that we hear so often in the media. Please, we want accurate information. Um, we would also, as regards to crime and violence, Right. We want you to also tally information about, you know, possible criminals and their evil deeds. We want you to track the criminals and we want you to apprehend the criminals. We want to, you to put the criminals to send the criminals to justice so that Jamaicans can live uh, a much more safer sort of existence there. Right. They can live safely in their homes and on their properties because for too long. Jamaicans are living in this insecure environment. So I would like to hear, Mr. Prime Minister, if you could do that, right? If you could do that, I'd appreciate that. I don't think at this point in time you should be judging the citizens because if we should look at the example set by the Prime Minister and the government officials over the years since independence in 1962, I don't think that the government has been a truthful government. The Jamaican government has often told lies to its citizens. It has often filled its citizens with misinformation and disinformation. So Mr. Prime Minister, it's time for you now to pick the beak out of your own eyes, right? And not seek to attack your other citizens and thinking that you need to be held in charge of them. You need to be their father as it were, because you're not their father and the politicians are not their parents, right? They are adults and they should be able to accept information or to diffuse information. And they should also be able to suffer as it were the consequences of the choices that they make, right? Because even parents who would like their children to make right decisions, they can't force them to do that. If parents want their children to be educated and intelligent, they understand that they can only present to them what they think is the truth. But if they don't want to accept it, right, they are free individuals to reject that truth. Even God himself allows, he says, whomsoever will, right? God does not force us. He cajoles us, right? And he warns us to accept the truth. But if we want to accept lies, God allows us to do the same, understanding that we will suffer the consequences for accepting such lies and such propaganda. So, Mr. Prime Minister, it's very, very important that you understand 
that while you're warning the public, I don't want you to hear right now that you are about to monopolize information and to control the flow of information on social media, because that is not your purpose. That is not the job for which the citizens of Jamaica um, sent you to Parliament to do, right? So I'm hoping that you are not saying that as a, as a pretext of restricting and controlling and censoring information online. Those are my few thoughts. I'm not sure if you will be in agreement with what I've said, but this is my thoughts. And I thought of just making this brief video to let you know that this is what your prime minister has to say in light of what he has already said, because he's on record of saying some weeks ago that he needs to control information and that, you know, particularly the information on social media, because there's a lot of misinformation and you know, disinformation. And we all know that. But people also know that there's a lot of misinformation and disinformation in government because the government, particularly our media, um, are the greatest purveyors of misinformation and disinformation. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you will like and you'll share and you subscribe and that you will join me for another interesting video um, when I shall upload another one. All the best to you. See you then. Bye. Ciao.